So I would like to welcome everyone here. So we'll start. This webinar. So everybody, I uh, guess we are, if you have any question or you cannot hear us properly, please, there is a link where the, you can find this box conversation and you can raise your hands and then we will be uh, coming to you. So first of all, thank you very much uh, for coming to this webinar. Um, as a way of introduction, I would like to say that this uh, agricultural land law has been adopted by the National Assembly of Mali three months ago with the view of minimizing conflict related to agricultural land. This law is paving the way for acceleration of rural land security and gender equality. This specific law will supplement the legal framework related to sustainable management of agricultural land and aims to improve land governance and better regulate the sector by proposing a better distribution of agricultural land between the different actors and strengthening customary land rights. This is the first time in the legislative history of Mali that the law was specifically enacted to deal with agricultural land and thus it represents a critical moment for rural communities in Mali. Farmers and particularly women have gained stability and critical new right to their traditional land. Our colleague Mohamed, that you can see in the screen, dropped a blog on his experience and we have shared it with you. And as a result of this blog, a numerous of inquiries to learn more about the implication of the agricultural land law and how it was developed, we have decided together with IPAD uh, to exchange via this interactive session with the two main actors who contributed to the development of the agricultural land law. So I will introduce them. Uh, so we have Mamadou Goita. Is a development socialist economist and a specialist in education and training system from Mali. He is currently the executive director of the Institute for Research and the Promotion of Alternatives in Development, IFPAD Afrique. Mamadou has worked on issues like cotton, extractive industry, conflict management, governance, decentralization, and local development and again, migration too. For many years, he has been involved in many economic, social, and social economic studies, research, and evaluation processes in Africa. He is a member of various regional network in Africa and president of several scientific and non-governmental boards in Africa. So welcome, Mamadou. Uh, among mm -hmm. other, Mamadou also teach at the University of Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso, the National School of Applied Economic Dakar in Senegal, and the African Center for Management Study of Dakar. He is now uh, the director of IRPAD, uh, and Mamadou left the drafting of the agricultural land policy, which paved the way to the new law. My colleague here, Mohamed Koulibaly, is an advisor on law and agriculture for the Economic Law and Policy Program at IISD. Mohamed provides legal and policy advice on issues related to foreign investment in agriculture. He provides training and advisory services to developing countries' governments focusing on Africa with respect to the negotiation, drafting, and implementation of agriculture investment contracts and national and regional laws and policies aiming at maximizing the benefits and minimizing the risk from foreign investment in the agriculture sector. Mohamed is also an assistant professor of law at the University of Bamako. He was worked on several topics related to sustainable development and agriculture and has conducted research on the legal, social and environmental aspect of development projects, land policies, seed laws, and other agricultural issues in Mali and Africa. He was a legal person on the team led by Mamadou to draft the agricultural land policy from 2012 
2014. So before I turn uh, to Mohamed, uh, I would like to indicate that the floor will be open for questions and comments after the presentation. So and when we come to comments, I will recommend to remain concise in order to allow other people to have a, a chance to participate. So please feel free to uh, use uh, the tablet conversation if you have any question or any comments too. Um, so, uh, and if you have any difficulty, I will be here along the way. So without further ado, I will turn over to Mo Mohamed. Thank you, Francine. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. And good evening, maybe, <laughs> because this is an international uh, conference online. As Francine introduced, uh, we want this as a joint presentation, but uh, I will be presenting the whole PowerPoint and Mamadou will compl complement and comment on my presentation right after, before we open uh, for questions and uh, comments. So as Francine uh, said in the introduction, uh, this is the first time in the legislative history in Mali that we have a law that specifically deals with uh, agricultural lands. We will uh, understand why uh, in the course of this presentation. And we wanted also this, present, uh, this session to be as interactive as possible. So we wanted it very uh, brief, the presentation. So I will be just focusing on three main points, the context and the background, so people can understand where we were at and uh, where we have uh, gone from to get this uh, law adopted. Uh, after that, the, the law itself, what is, it, what is in it, uh, what has changed, and what are the weaknesses and the downsides that we can still uh, improve with farmers and other uh, uh, key actors, including the government. And then uh, we will uh, finish with the conclusion in, in the end. As a background, I uh, wanted also to recall the, a brief history of agricultural and land governance in Mali, uh, and mainly focusing on agricultural lands. The main feature of the legal framework that existed before uh, was that there was no distinction between rural agricultural la uh, laws and lands and other type of lands. That was a main future and it was uh, confused. There was a confusion between what is a, an agricultural land and what are other types of lands and farmers couldn't find their way in those legislations. The other main feature of this legislation was that there was a strong presence and still a strong presence of customary laws and tradition at the local level, which uh, were and still govern uh, rural and agricultural lands and farmers' rights to those lands. Another one which is very important is also that the laws that were in place recognized customary laws and tradition uh, in those local uh, levels, villages, and other type of uh, dwell, uh, dwellings. But the problem was that the customs and traditions were not implemented. It was they were recognized by the law, but they were not implemented. So farmers uh, had very weak rights, and they could not uh, seek for their implementation. And the final one, which is linked also to the non-implementation non of customary laws, was the dominance of statutory law. And the core principle of these statutory laws with what we call in French, the principe de domanialité, which means that all states, I mean, the, and the, the main understanding is not the, 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 the meaning per se, but the main understanding of it in Mali and in mostly francophone countries, is that the land belongs to the states 
and the states has the right and the power to develop it and to uh, distribute it according to the laws. So this resulted in a very weak, uh, very weak uh, legislative framework for farmers and their rights, their access to land and the securing of those rights. But after, during the evolution of the legislative history of Mali, uh, as it applies to agriculture and uh, agricultural lands, we have adopted a law in 2006 called the Agricultural Orientation Law. This law is a very important one because it's changed all the uh, processes and practices in agriculture in general and also in land governance in particular. It is a framework law that serves as a reference, like I said, uh, to all agricultural policy uh, making in Mali. The, the, the main important thing to also keep in mind when we talk about agricultural orientation law in Mali is that it is a law which was led, uh, the drafting of this law was led by farmers themselves. The government has decided to assign the drafting process of the law because we are talking about agriculture, agricultural policies. They thought farmers were the key actors to lead the process and the, their concerns could be integrated in the, into this law. This is also a first in Mali, in the legislative history of Mali that a, an agricultural policy, a policy is led by uh, individuals and their associations, not the government. That's why it was very uh, uh, integrative and inclusive in its adoption and also in its, its con content because farmers recognize themselves in it and still look for its implementation because they think it is their, their law. It is this law that says that Mali needs to have an agricultural land policy which is not just a land policy, but a differentiated policy that focuses only on agricultural land to clarify all the issues linked to those lands and also recognize and secure farmers' rights to those lands. And then after that, as the law, the agricultural orientation law provided for it, the implementation process began and we have started the process of ad adopting the agricultural land policy in 2012. And like I wrote in my blog, my role was to, I was with Mamadou, my colleague here. Uh, he was the, the, the lead of the team in the drafting process of this agricultural policy. I was the main uh, lawyer to analyze, analyze the laws and uh, make sure that we reflect uh, what is in the law, what are the main problems in the law that we, the policy need to give orientation on so that the agricultural land law that will come can provide solution to those uh, issues. And we uh, included farmers in the process with the main, the, the big, biggest organiza farmers organization in Mali, which is CNOP, uh, Coordination Nationale des Organisations Paysannes du Mali, and also AOPP, you will see their, their, uh, 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 these are their logos on the Agricultural Orientation Law. So they have provided a lot of information. They have participated in consultation processes around the country because we have traveled in different uh, uh, villages and also uh, regions to explain the main issues and to also uh, receive feedbacks from people and farmers to understand the main issues and make sure the policy gives orientation on how to deal with those uh, uh, issues. And these are the main features of the policy that deal with those problems that we have identified during this uh, consultation process with farmers uh, to secure land for agribusiness companies and also for small scale farmers. But as we know, 
the main, uh, uh, mostly we have small scale farmers in Mali. 75% of farmers are small scale farmers. So the policy says that priority should be given to uh, those farmers in access to land and also in securing their lands. Uh, another one is that customary land rights should be removed from state lands because that was the main feature as I want, uh, presented in the introduction that uh, customary land rights of farmers were integrated in state lands. So state can come and take uh, the land from farmers without any other uh, problem. Maybe they will inform them and kind of uh, compensate for the, 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 what is on the land, but not for the land because the land does not belong to them. The, the policy says that we should remove this from uh, the state lands. Another one is to integrate tenure, customary tenure and statutory tenure as we go forward. Another one is to promote public investment. First, priority should be on public investment because if we want to prioritize farmers, which are national of the country, it's the state who should support the main cause. The, 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 another one is to make sure farmers can transmit their, their, their rights to their heirs because in some contexts, uh, people will inherit land from their parents and uh, see themselves uh, dispossessed from those lands with uh, any uh, consideration to other rights. Though, so the law should also make sure that if the land belongs to a family, it should be transmitted to uh, their heirs. And also make sure that it can be, they can do transaction on those lands, which is complicated now in customary tenure system. There was also capacity building because farmers needed that to play their roles. And we have done all of, uh, a lot of that with the uh, farmers organization, including with support from govern government and also to clarify governance of land resources. So this was the background on which the law should have built, and that's the process we have followed. After the policy, we have started the drafting of the agricultural law. That was in 2014. We have done in between a lot of trainings to farmers, a lot of meetings with uh, Mamadou, with IRPAD, and other uh, lawyers and colleagues to make sure farmers understand the main issues and keep pushing for their rights because from 2014 to now, we have known three main versions of the law. The first one was very consensual. After that, the government removed some uh, main features from the law and the farmers didn't like that. So they, with our support, they continue to, to push so that the government put back the main features so their rights can be uh, respected. But in the end, still the law is not perfect, but they, 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 they gain something and, and we'll see that. And the, the, this, this is what we call the achievements of the law. The, the first one is that the law builds on shared vision because in the past, we have done a lot of uh, for our meeting consultations and the reports and recommendations of those activities were, were there. The main uh, orientation that the government and farmers themselves gave to the team when we were drafting the, the, the policy phase was to build on those uh, key documents. And it, they, are, they were also reflected in the law. The, the, the first one is that uh, uh, the National Forum we call it in French, Etat Généraux, where 70 key recommendations were adopted in two, uh, 2009. After that, there was a diagnosis of agricultural land in Mali, and this diagnosis focused on agricultural lands and uh, really helped when we were drafting the policy. And after that, we, see, uh, we saw that the law uh, built on those and provided stronger customary land rights to farmers. The first one, uh, I mean, the first uh, feature of the law that reinforces 
customary rights of farmers is identification and verification. To protect those rights, the law says to verify and to, uh, to identify and then to verify the consistence of those rights. We call it in French constatation. After that, we will document with some uh, certificates that the law has uh, 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 introduced in the legislative framework. And in case of dispute, the law says that after 20 years of, uh, of possession, the land should belong to the person who occupies it, which was not the case in the past because in a region where you are 30 years after settling considered as a stranger, the land can still, uh, could still be uh, removed from you. But with the new law, after 20 years, you are considered as the right possessor of the land and you can look for the protection of your rights. Another achievement is the improvement of the governance system of uh, land laws in Mali. In the past, there was a lot of uh, incoherence between institutions in land distribution. For example, uh, in, in what we call land grabbing and some will call land investment, we saw that many investors signed contracts with different actors, with different government institutions, like the Ministry of Agriculture sometime, Office de Niger sometime, which is a, a state-owned enterprise that deals, uh, that manages uh, lands in the, uh, one of Mali's regions. And sometimes even uh, at an upper level at the prime minister's office. This, there was a lot of confusion in land governance. The new law says that there should be an integrated process of dealing, uh, in dealing with this management from the local level to the national level. And for that, we have created two new institutions, village land commissions and land observatory. And after that, which is a corollary, corollary of this is the decentralization of land management. Municipalities will play key roles. And as I say, the management will be more integrated. Women's rights, I, I call it an attempt of protection because it's not still there. We are not there yet. The law says that all state lands, when there is a, a distribution, 15% should go to women and vulnerable group, groups. But at the same time, there are some uh, provisions of the law that say uh, customary lands should be governed by the customs and we know in Mali and many African countries, customs are inherently discriminatory to, to women. And there is no provision in the law that uh, protects women from the discrimination. That's why I, I call it an attempt of protection. And maybe in the implementation measures, we should uh, try to uh, bring about some protection on that. And, and my colleague here, Mamadou, maybe will uh, uh, say something on, on, on that because we did some research separately from the law on those issues. Education awareness raising, I've also mentioned that, that farmers and other civil society organizations needed that to uh, play fully their roles in the uh, adoption of the law. Another uh, issue with the law, as I said in the introduction, is that it's not a complete uh, process and the law is not perfect. There are some downsides. I've al already mentioned women's rights. Uh, another one is that the law is very short. I've mentioned in the uh, introduction that we have witnessed three mesh uh, versions of the law from 2014 to now. And during that process, we have witnessed that the law lost many of its provisions somewhere there to clarify uh, some other issues already uh, there now, but somewhere adding value to what was already there. Uh, farmers with our support uh, tried to promote uh, the inclusion of articles that were removed 
but they haven't gained because all the time the government would say in the implement, implementing measures, you would see that the law is still the same. We have just make, make, made it uh, simple and easy, uh, easier to understand. But still, this is a problem because the, the most provision we have, uh, the, the, the more provision we have, the more clear the law is. And we wanted that to be uh, the way, but farmers did not gain that. Another one is uh, that when we leave everything to the implementi implementing measures, the government can only uh, take those measures without consulting uh, farmers or just organize key meetings uh, and quick meetings to say uh, people have participated because these are decrees and uh, decisions. They don't have to go to the parliament. They don't have to uh, follow the process of consultation that we have already known with the policy and the law. So that we think there is a track there that may create some new problems for farmers. But still, farmers are determined to fight for those rights and make sure that what is really in the law will be implemented. To quickly conclude on that and end to Mamadou so that he can comment on what I'm presenting and add. In the conclusions, uh, we, we learned some lesson some lessons from this, the process, and this is, these are not the, all the lessons, but the key ones is that consultation and inclusion of all stakeholders are in the drafting of policies and laws, and specifically when it comes to agriculture, and specifically again when it comes to land, land issues and land, land governance, because we know many of 90% or 80% of conflicts in Mali are linked to land. So if we do a lot of consultation, we in, uh, inclusively uh, make participate all the key stakeholders, we are sure that we can uh, achieve positive outcomes and make sure that the law and the policies that come out of the process will be easily implemented with no problem. Uh, Another one is that farmers, when they understand, and we know that for them to understand, we need to support them. Some understand very well, but still as they are well organized and very uh, sparsed in the territory of the country, we need to accompany them, to train them, and uh, make them understand all the issues. And if they do that, they can stand for themselves and make sure that the law includes all uh, their concerns and the implementation again will be easy and the rights will be protected. So that's, uh, these, these are the key uh, messages, are the key lessons uh, we learned from the process. And as I've concluded also in the blog that we will be still assisting farmers and supporting them in this implementation process. And the government, I should say, is not uh, close to that. They are open to this interaction with farmers, with helpers, with uh, institutes like IRPAD and other civil society organizations. They even used to call uh, people to come for regular meetings. And uh, to, to conclude again, the steering committee that steered the process. In this steering committee, farmers were represented and the government uh, regularly provide information, invite them. So we think the government is open to this process and hopefully the implementation will serve uh, the objective and the vision of the law and the policy. Thank you. So uh, very quickly, because I, Mohamed presented everything, and then I think it's uh, clear so far to allow us to have a, a discussion. Um, just uh, since I have to add something to, uh, so that people can hear me before they ask the questions, I'll just add two small things. The first one is about the process. I think that Mohamed mentioned all the innovations that have been included in this policy. But in terms of process, I really need to emphasize on it. We have been doing 
with this uh, policy and the, and the law to some extent, the most open and inclusive policy process in the country. Uh, because of the time that we took, because the, the government was rushing first, starting in 2010 with the baseline studies, they wanted to finish the whole process in 2011. One year constitutional discussion, less than one year, but we refused that. So the, the policy was adopted only in 2014, even though you had one year of visa security issues, but it's also done on purpose to make it, to give us time to consult. So the, in, the, in, the, in the past, when we had a policy document like this, uh, the government will organize three meetings. One in Mopti, including all the, uh, uh, the silent, uh, silent, part of, silent part of the country, including Tumbuktu, Gao, Kidal, all the participants will come to Mopti, look at the document in one day, or sometimes even half a day, and then they, put, they have the input and that's it. And there is another meeting that is organized in Selenge, uh, in, uh, in, uh, just including uh, regions like Segu, uh, Kulikoro, and, uh, and uh, Sikaso. And usually there is another meeting in Kai. So sometimes these are the free meetings that they will organize, discuss half a day or one day, and adopt things and then go back. We refuse that process. So we propose to have an open uh, discussion with communities, so starting at village level. So we had presented in each region, we took, we choose some villages where we had to uh, explain in the local language the full document with a, 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 a framework that we had, a form that we prepared. So we have been training many people in this process. Uh, Mohamed and myself have been training uh, uh, some of the facilitators, uh, uh, facilitators at, grand, at grassroots level, including farmers' representatives, so to allow them to interpret the different content of this uh, law and explain to the village level. So we have a range of villages when we had the consultation, and then this, from the village level, we go to the, to the communal level. This is the local government. So including most of the villages that are participating to that process. And then from the communal level, we go to the intermediary uh, level, that is uh, what you call here the CERP. And then we go to the region for regional consultations before coming back to the national one. So this was very, very important because we had a kind of um, methodology that can allow at least for the eight, uh, the eight uh, uh, regions that we have, and the 703 communes that we have in the country, at least to have all, the, all these communes covered via villages or via uh, the, the community itself. So that was very important. And another point is that before starting this work, because Mohammed had also, he didn't mention it, but he had a, a hard task to summarize also some of the, the, the baseline studies that we did, because I asked him to do that work first. And for, from that period, we did a preliminary work, asking first farmers groups to have their own internal process and bring us what you have been calling the memorandum, farmers memorandum on land issue in Mali. So there was a, a range of commitment, a range of recommendations, a range of uh, questions that were raised by them and this is, has been the main tool that we have been using also starting the process. So this has been from the beginning to the end, the document that we have been also interrogating online of what we have been doing. So this is something that I want to mention. And the last point before giving you the floor is also about the role that uh, uh, some external partners wanted to play in this process. So we have been very clear because uh, Mohamed and myself have been invited to participate to a couple of meetings by what we call the, the uh, partners of, of Mali, who, was, who were interested in, uh, in this policy. So bilateral and multilateral corporations invited us to expose about our process, our methodology, and all these kind of things. When we finished with draft zero of the document, we wanted to submit to a first consultation with the steering committee. So there was also a contribution from these donors because they are donors. They, they had uh, something like 14 pages of comments. And most of these comments were linked to privatizing land in Mali. Most of them were about that. You don't have any choice. You have to open this land market that is already there. So you need just to put some tools of securing this land market, but there is no choice, you have to go that way. So 
I was a bit tough with them because we were with government officials. They were looking for resources for this consultation. And we told them that day that this is an intimacy of Malians. There is no single word that will come for anybody from outside. Whatever you have been funding, that will be included in this document if people from Mali don't agree. So this has been clear for the meeting. We had one at the Luxembourg Corporation, including the World Bank, uh, French Corporation, Netherlands, and so on and so forth. So we told them your 14 pages can be you know, tools for, for reflection for, for us, but one single word can be included in this document if Mali and themselves did, don't agree with it. So we have been clear. The government was afraid, but the Netherlands Corporation, because we said that, said that we are right, and then decided to support the rest of the process in terms of consultations. So that's very, very important that in this process, for the first time, that we refuse. And we had also, at the end of the day, the support from the government to say any single external contribution can be considered to be for granted, included in this document, once if it's not accepted but Mali and themselves, because this is our, our common living together and we need to frame it, to agree on it, and any other, any other contribution can be just add on if we agree on it, otherwise it's useless. So this is something that I really want to mention, the role of different players on this process. IRPAD has been very, very uh, uh, clear and, and with ourselves, with the government, saying that we need to achieve the process in that way. They accept it, so this means also the credibility, institutional credibility is very instrumental also in this kind of process. So this is also something that we can learn from it uh, uh, so that the, this kind of good relationship between the government and the, uh, uh, the organization that is uh, uh, leading the process is also very important. We have to bring contradiction, but we respect to each other and agree on a clear process that will lead us to, to, uh, uh, to, to that end. So we have been also sometime invited by the government, even the ministry's meeting, internal meeting, to talk about the process because they were completely afraid of the way that we are leading some of these things. But they totally agree with us to continue that way. So I just wanted to add these things so that we can open the floor for you to, to ask questions or have comments uh, if you want. So th thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Mohammed, for this brilliant presentation. So, so this concludes uh, the part of the webinar presentation. So now I will move for the question, comments. So please feel free to, to share or ask Mohamed and uh, Mohamed will play very, a key role in this uh, development. Karin? Um, hi, Karen Smaller from IISD. I was just going to say that I think everybody, if they want to speak or ask a question, um, can just unmute their own microphones and then they can speak. Is that right, Francine? Yes, please. Okay. I let other people take the floor. Perhaps I can start. Can can you hear me? Yes, we can hear properly. Yes, so I'm I'm uh, Tongi from uh, IFD. So thank you very much for the presentation. I just wanted to to ask something that in the presentation you mentioned the fact that small scale uh, family farmers were prioritized. And um, uh, can you please give us more explanation about that? How are they prioritized, and what are the particular measures? that are taken for small-scale family farmers. Okay. And um, another thing was that you mentioned at the end when uh, talking about the issues and downsides, that some um, of the key elements of the law were removed during the process. And could you please be more specific on which elements were removed? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. How do we do? We take a range of questions and we come back or we just answer? It, it, we will appreciate having all the questions. Okay. 
Is anybody else would like to comment or have a question? Yes, I would like to actually. Yes, please. Uh, I try to I try to put my video on, but I'm 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 in the car. And oh no! If the internet we if can... the internet is good enough. Uh, anyway, uh, I have a question concerning a very specific question because you, uh, I read in the article thirty four of your of the law that a traditional farmer can actually apply uh, with a formula, apply for, for securing his rights. And uh, I just wonder if, uh, if this is not enough, uh, or if, if this, how we can, or how you think you can reduce bureaucracy in order to, uh, to secure their rights. Because if the farmer have to apply uh, themselves for everything, that is gonna, I can't really see it happen, uh, that the people have the, the, the possibility to do so. Okay. That was my question. Thank you. Hi, this is um, Stephanie. Can you hear me? Yes, Stephanie. Hi. Um, I, I have three quick questions. Um, thank you, by the way. It's very, very interesting. Um, the first question is, is there um, potent, do you, does anyone on this call know about any potential for something similar to happen in Chad? Because um, Tier Fund did um, a report with um, IID about their draft um, land law um, and we have that report if anyone's interested um, I just wonder if anyone knew about any potential for something similar um, I was also interested if there's um, how this law links with pastoralists and the sort of issues there and, and their involvement um, and my third question is um, I guess how can people access it who perhaps haven't um, gone through the consultation process um, and um, say for like tier funds um, partners who work in Mali um, what's the best way to sort of share this information with them so they can start to sort of access their rights? Thank you. So we'll take another question for Aruna, Disa, before you respond, Mohamed. And after that, we'll go for another range of questions. Okay. A Aruna, please. Uh, Aruna, the floor is yours. Mohamed, she seems having a problem, so could you please respond to the question? Okay, yeah. Uh, I start and Mamadou will compliment. Uh, the first question, uh, small scale, yeah, small scale farmers. So in the presentation, I said uh, that the law and the policy say that should uh, the far small scale farmers should be prioritized in the access to the land and also in uh, their tenure security. So the land is not, I mean, the law is not uh, implemented yet. So there is no specific measure per se that was uh, taken. But uh, there are key actions that were identified in the law to be taken, uh, I mean, in the policy to be taken for the implementation of the law that uh, will be to create the institutions that we, we've said and also uh, to identify and uh, document the rights of farmers to their lands because farmers are already occupying agricultural lands in their different villages and regions. What is not done is the securing of those rights. Can the land be taken from them easily and uh, leave them uh, with no livelihoods? That's, that is the situation actually. So how to protect them? The rights that they have at the village level is customary. So the law says the customary rights should be recognized and also documented. And when it is documented, it is registered at the municipality level because uh, what I've, I have not have time to say in the presentation is, is the decentralization of land management. The municipalities will have those rights uh, to keep records of the rights so that to prevent conflicts and make sure 
farmers who are occupying the, the lands are known and also their rights are secured. So these are actions to be taken in the future. And as we say, the priority will be uh, given to small scale farms. Uh, Excuse me if I can. On key uh, examples. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. yes Just to, yes. To, to, to better understand. So you, you are saying that as of today, nothing has started. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. But uh, yeah, some, and you, do some you think actions it, were already on the ground. Do you think it will take time? For example, yeah, it will take a lot of time because mm. Mali is a very big country. Mm, mm. Uh, we have villages everywhere. But we had uh, already started a process that we call uh, P Projet Pilot, uh, mm. the Constatation okay. de, 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 de Coutume, uh, mm. which was a pilot of uh, identification and also uh, mm. documentation of, and of some do, According to you, at the, at the local level, the, the structures are in place to, to, to start with uh, implementing some actions or... Do, do you need also, there is a need for some time to, to create those structure and... Uh... Yeah, yeah, some structures are already there, but Mamadou mm. wanted also to add something to, okay. to that. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's some short point. Eh? Uh, this issue of priority has been a very, very long fight also since the agricultural uh, orientation law. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at this first document, uh, in some chapters, some articles, it's clearly said that there are two types of farms in Mali that are identified in this uh, orientation law. The first one is family farming, recognized per se, as being the basis of our agricultural system in the country. But also it recognizes uh, 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 what we call individual farms, but it's uh, said uh, uh, exploitation agricole privé. So it can be of different range because as you know that in, in this uh, uh, typology, you can divide them into two groups. The first one is agribusiness. Agribusiness in the sense that individuals who have multifunctions, they can be civil servants and others uh, having farms and then developing initiative that is online of in, uh, between the family farms and the, uh, agri uh, the industrial system. Mm -hmm. And you have Agro-industries. Agro-industries, in this case, these are uh, the pri also private initiatives, but with uh, a large-scale ones, and then dealing with this kind of thing. So this is recognized. But in the orientation law already, there was a fight to say that if we have these two types of agricultural system in, the, in, the, in, the, in access to the resources, access to the pu public funding and all these kind of things, we should put a provision on who should be prioritized in case there is a short of resources, for instance. Right? Seems like we're having a small problem. So we are trying to add them, but it seems like there is a network issue. Sorry, we are trying to get them on, on board. Uh, if you have any question, if you can, or any comments, while we are trying to have uh, Mohamed and Mamadou on.
Yes, Francine? Ah. Yes. Yes, I think Ahuna wanted to uh, to ask a question before. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, please, can you hear me? Yes, uh, properly. Okay, okay, okay thank you. Uh, I'm glad about it. Uh, thank you for uh, this uh, meeting. I think... Uh, it is uh, really important, and, uh, and I'm uh, interested about uh, to know more about it. Uh, so that uh, yeah, this is an opportunity for me uh, to talk more about it. My question is related uh, to uh, the possibility for farmers to get access to credit uh, and uh, to use land as a collateral uh, to have access to credit uh, with uh, this in mind. And uh, uh, what kind of protection they get uh, from this new law uh, about that. Hello. Ouais, problème de connexion. Attends, est-ce que on a l'impression? Francine, you are muted. The speaker is not hearing you. Mohamed and uh, Mamadou are there. So please, you can you can ah, okay. continue. Okay. Je pense que j'ai tout là. Voilà. On est sur le Merci téléphone. Le Fra Francine, can you just repeat um, the question from Aruna so that Mohamed and, and Mamadou can hear it? Yeah. Can, can you hear us? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better, so yeah. Now we're on on a cell phone, it's so not, it's not on the phone. Eh? Yeah, give it to Mama so he can finish what he was saying. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, my question is, uh, yeah, my my question is that uh, yeah, in in uh, in uh, developing countries such as Mali. Uh, small have, have difficult to have a credit or to have access to credit, and uh, one of the cause of this power of uh, this uh, lack of access to credit is they don't have collateral, uh, yeah, to guarantee for credit. I think exactly. land can be used as collateral uh, to have access to credit. Mm -hmm. And uh, if this is the case, uh, which kind of mechanism of protection they gain from this new uh, law in Mali? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I was just uh, talking about some of these uh, the issues related to farmers, small-scale producers uh, in, uh, in the country. So I, just I will finish very quickly this point before coming. Okay. For uh, other uh, issues. Right. So, um, can you hear me? Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just putting the mic. The mic yeah? Okay. So, just. Uh, okay. So, we, we have been struggling with the same point. <clears throat> After finishing the uh, uh, orientation law, we have been putting okay. this, the same provision in the in the in the total land policy. <coughs> okay. Excuse me. We put it on the on the on the policy. But uh -huh. uh, many many members of the steering committee didn't uh -huh. agree with this provision. Because they were saying if you have two types of farms, why do you mm -hmm. want to give priority to one over the others? So that it was a very big debate. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember that being called by the minister himself to come and explain because they couldn't understand why and the, and, the, and the donors were telling them that this is a discrimination that they are putting in the law that can be very problematic. So the minister himself was not really at ease. So they asked me to come in the ministry meeting, the meeting preparing the, uh, 
uh, the, 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 the ministry's meeting the next day to explain why. Mm -hmm. I said this is a provision that has been a fight for farmers for a long time. Just we cannot avoid mm -hmm. that. So this is why we will see in the policy, it's repeated, mm -hmm. I think, that something like uh, six or seven times. And priority mm -hmm. is in bold. It's in bold okay. because we all agree that since there is not, it's not extended the land availability and the issue of security, mm -hmm. and we recognize mm -hmm. that more than 98% uh, more than of our farming system is on family farming. We cannot mm -hmm. avoid yeah. including mm -hmm. this provision of giving priority to access and to security to small scale producers. Mm -hmm. This is why also all the legal instrument that will allow to access to credit or to access to other things mm -hmm. in priority also will be given mm -hmm. to farmers. And then this is linked to some of the questions that mm -hmm. have been asked because we all know that uh, uh, there will be in insecurity once, even if we recognize that customary law uh, is also binding mm -hmm. legally, it won't be in security if there is no, at least something, uh, 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 something like yeah. a, a document that will allow us to secure them and then say, if we have 100 hectares of land that the government has been putting his money, he has to give this land in priority to small scale producers instead of just putting uh, the public resources in a land to irrigate it and give it to uh, uh, some foreign investor or to a, 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 someone who has already who is already a civil servant and so on so forth. So there are some of the cases that we had in the country in the past that we sue the government in the past, in 86, uh, 96, to give back land to farmers that have been taken from them and give it to some civil servant because they couldn't pay only the cost of uh, water in the in uh, in, uh, in the in this land. So it's just to take. In, into our countries. So it's good already to have it in, as a provision in the law, and then people will fight for the implementation so that it can be a reality. This is why the land commissions are in place. Mm -hmm. There will be a key element, a key uh, players on, on this kind mm -hmm. of uh, 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 positive discrimination for, for fa family farming mm -hmm. system vis-a-vis uh, -vis other players in, the, in, in access and security on land. So, uh, and the different mm -hmm. instrument that you are putting into place that can be uh, the issue now that is developed as a, a community, uh, a community tattling instead of having uh, individual tattling that will be very problematic for most of them in some areas, just to have access to different credit system without giving uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, opportunities also to the bank to take back the land because they all know, for instance, the intern, yeah. the, intern, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the interest rate, the highest in the region, uh, 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 the total rentability in turn uh, of agriculture in, in West Africa is around 7%. But most of the credit system that exists are, are below 12%. So this means what? That if you give them land titles without any kind of guarantee and they gave it to the banker to have access to credit for sure that they cannot pay with the interest rate that exists so far. And, and, and if they cannot pay, this means that the title that they have will return back to the banker. And if it's returned back to the banker, he will give it to those who has money. So this means that we'll assist to a concentration of land in the hands of few people. This is why also this priority issue is very important. And it is linked also to the customary law that exists in a given region. And we have five social tenor zones in the country. So the, well, the practices are the same in terms of customary law. And related to that. So it's linked to that and the land commission will be key players so that this issue of priority can be implemented very much more easily. So if there is any contribution from public resources, uh, they already, uh, uh, this is more problematic, like the case of Office de Niger, Mohamed has been mentioning. Just to give you an idea, in 2009, when we had these first studies on land grabbing issue, uh, if you go, but the sample of 2009 family farm that we took, 60, uh, 56% of them has less than three hectares. And it's, it's known in this region that less than three hectares, you cannot produce enough to feed your family, to sell part of your production in the market and care about social services in your family. We are even, even don't talk about, about saving resources for development of your farm. But at the same time, the government was giving land to foreign investors like uh, 
le niveau, like uh, et, uh, uh, so, so companies from from the UK, from uh, from Libya, eh? Malibia and all, and all this for more than 700, uh, 750,000 uh, hectares of land, thousand hectares of land. At the same time, people don't have access because of this situation. So we put this provision of prioritizing family farming for access and security on land, just to ensure that if the government don't do that, uh, doesn't do that, so we have we have at least legal things to to say uh, uh, to to just uh, sue them again because of this attitude. It's the same case for women accessing 15% of the land when we put public resources, and we need to sort it out at uh, at uh, the customary low level. But we want to ensure that if there is public money that has put been put in a given area securing land we need to have to ensure that women have access to it in the orientation law irpad has been teaching a bit cheating a bit to add 15 percent mm -hmm. instead of 10 because the the agricultural orientation law we're talking about 10 percent but since we had this memorandum and we had all this discussion with farmer we put 15 percent and it was passed with this 15 percent and now it's binding for the government so this has been something that we did because we have been working on the, on the gender policy in the country. So we have been framing that gender policy. We have been negotiating the gender policy uh, uh, also to, uh, uh, to come in the country. And we know that there is a big uh, uh, challenge with women, women access to land. So we just cheated and put it this positively and put this provision of 15% instead of so 10 that was in, included in the former document. So this is why priority issue is very important. So I will give back to Mohamed so that he can continue with the other things and then we can come back to this, uh, the other issue that you have mentioned. Uh, the, the question on, on Chad, I will le uh, leave that to you, Mamadou, because I'm not aware of this process in Chad. Uh, the question of bureaucracy, uh, in, I mean, the new law is done to avoid that because the access to land, as we know in our countries, is very bureaucratic and very complicated. So to make sure that farmers easily access to land and before even we get to a security level, uh, we have decentralized the management. That's what I, I, uh, I was mentioning in the introduction. And to, to, this more, to do uh, more of this decentralization, uh, the creation of the land commission at the village level is very key. So the role of this commission at the village level is to deliver certificates of customary rights and also certificate of land possession. And this commission will also work closely with the municipalities because it's the state uh, via the municipality uh, that will deliver the format in which these uh, rights will be recorded. Uh, the certificates are pre-printed uh, pre and just filled by the land commission, uh, recognizing and uh, documenting uh, farmers' rights at the village level. They don't have to travel. They don't have to go see any state representative to register their rights. Once this is done at the village commission level, they will take it to the municipality that will also do some due diligence of verification and then will legalize. The law use the term of legalization. So to uh, grant legal value to the certificate. So be, at the commission level, it's just a starting uh, process of the uh, certification. But once the uh, municipality deliver the, this uh, uh, legalization document, it is official that the land is occupied and possessed by this person and it will uh, uh, remain in his hand uh, in conformity with the law. The, the, at the, there is an, another level of protection that individual farmers can go if they want, but at this level they can use it as a collateral, they can uh, do transaction on it. But if they want to, to have more protection, there is what we call titre, uh, comment on appelle? titre foncier. They can look for that, but this is very complicated. You have to go to the city level to do that. And there is a lot of money to pay for that, but they don't have to 
if they want to remain with those certificates. So I think this will avoid bureaucracy. Uh, the question on key elements removed from uh, the law in the evolution of the process, uh, I remember uh, two, two main things. Maybe Mamadou, uh, you, you can re uh, uh, add something. The first one was another institution created by the first version of the law, uh, which was Agence de Gestion des Terres Agricoles, uh, an agency that was supposed to be created to assist uh, municipalities, local governments, and also these commissions in the management, because there is, it's a very technical issue. So the state was supposed to create this agency to put money in it and follow up the implementation process and also assist uh, these people in managing uh, these laws. It, uh, it wasn't done. We don't know why it was removed from the law. Uh, farmers and uh, other civil society organizations uh, claimed to put it back, but they, it, it was not a success. Uh, another one was the law clearly uh, said that people can evolve from a land possession certificate to the titre foncier that I just mentioned. And it was clear what the process was and how easier that was in comparison to how it was before. So the law uh, tried to ease the process for farmers to get at that upper level of protection. That was also removed from the law. And the reason that was said was that it is already in the land code, which is uh, the umbrella code that deal with all land issues. The agricultural land law, which is the new one, is just focusing on agricultural lands. So if you want to go beyond uh, what the agricultural land law provides for your protection, you have to abide by the land code. We can't twice provide for the same thing differently in two laws. That was an argument which uh, we did not accept because we, we had lawyers among us. We knew there can be principle and exceptions. So we uh, advocated for that exception in the agricultural land law, but that also was not a success uh, because uh, the government did not like it. This is also a tricky, uh, I mean, that's a personal opinion. The government sometimes give, uh, uh, act like they are open, collaborative, and uh, 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 would accept all the, I mean, the main proposition from civil society and farmers. But when it comes to some key points, they will find a way all the time not to accept and to make their position prevail, which is not also a good thing. And that's why farmers are afraid in the implementation process that maybe things like that will come and they will they, they are still preparing for for that and they still ask from us support trainings and also information because uh for example i teach at the university i have access to many legal documents i have uh, information on the evolution of uh, key issues so they want us to be alert and to alert them when new things come up so that they can uh, be ready for fight. It's a, a long process and hopefully uh, we, we will get there. Mamadou, if uh, you can answer on the question uh, on Chad and also maybe add something. Yeah, I, I, will, just, I will just complete uh, one, one point on things that have been removed. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, some of the things that have been removed because uh, um, in the very first draft we had uh, uh, you know there are four kinds of lands that are now included because we have been fighting for that uh, and the, the, the uh, parliament has been including this point but in the document that they wanted to present to the parliament there were three categories of land the state lands the local government land and private lands. That was very contradictory if you look at the customary law and its relationship with community lands. Mm -hmm. So this point has been removed from the very first draft 
And then uh, it, it was a very important point because you cannot talk about the uh, customary laws on land for agriculture if you don't allow to have community lands. This means that all the uh, collective spaces that people have should have also a, a, a kind of uh, 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 part, part of, it, of, it, of a typology because it will lead us also to, to uh, some other tools that were mentioned in the, in, the, in the policy. So how can you identify something that uh, doesn't exist? Because for the local government, this will be the first time they will also have uh, land for themselves, by themselves. Because in the past, for urban, urban lands, local government should give uh, where the, uh, uh, the key players in uh, accessing to land. But uh, agricultural land issues, they were not allowed at all. They were not allowed at all. If they want, for instance, to have uh, uh, some piece of land to build a, 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 even a school or a health center, they can ask the government, the, the, the state to give it to them, part of this land in this region, or the communities to give land. So the communities are those who have land. It can be individual, but it can be also collective land. So that's something that has been removed. And there was a, 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 a big chapter on irrigated land issues, because this is very problematic. It has been removed from the, uh, from the, the text in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the course of the event. But we all know that there are challenges because the public resources have been used to manage this land. And at the end of the day, we'll find it in the hands of private sector and then excluding, excluding all the small scale producers, mainly women in this, in, this, uh, in this case. So we have been pushing also to have at least a chapter on that, seeing that uh, this, this uh, uh, provision for women and marginalized groups is still there, but also to say that if we have public resources investing, in the land, it should be also, uh, uh, we should pay attention to who is accessing to this land. There are also, uh, they, they also uh, took off some of the uh, uh, profession that exists in agriculture. Because in Mali, we said that when we talk about agriculture land, it's about uh, uh, vegetable growing uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the broad sense. It's about fish and fox. It's about uh, uh, pastoralism and, and so cattle and it's about also agroforestry, those who are doing uh, uh, just living out of uh, forest issues. So these are the four key uh, elements. But in the law, they were, uh, yeah, okay. So in the law, they took off some of these groups. So fish and folk were missing. This means that all the related uh, uh, fishing lands were excluded from the, from the, the provision, but also uh, uh, cattle was probably excluded. Cattle was excluded in the sense that one of the biggest group in cattle is pastoralist group. They were not in the, in, the, in, the, in the draft that they wanted to submit to the parliament. So this is also now corrected because the farmers organization brought back this, uh, uh, this uh, again. So I, I, I don't understand what you mean by, you are, you are talking about the chart because we have been also contacted by IFD. Uh, this is uh, Tangi's organization and other institution to contribute to the methodology of some of these laws in the regions as a contribution. I know that uh, there is a process going on actually in, in Benin, in, Niger, in Guinea, in Chad, uh, uh, in Senegal, but Senegal is, is, a, is a opposite way because they have been asking us when they drafted the first document. Uh, also, uh, yeah, working on this kind of uh, documentation. So for Chad, I don't have a clear picture of where they are actually. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that uh, you have uh, 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 another question behind the one that you were asking. Are you asking if we are aware of uh, what is going on actually in chat, yeah. or, in chat mm -hmm. or um, is it uh, about the content? So I don't know. But in terms of process, uh, uh, we have been contributing with some notes uh, to uh, different farmers group and PROPAC particularly, that is a regional farmers umbrella organization in Central Africa with someone that Koli and I have been discussing with a zoological paper that they, 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 they received before just going to the, uh, uh, to the discussion with the government. Uh, the, uh, yeah, okay, here also we are really uh, open because we are trying to, uh, to draw lessons from this process and try also to make it as a practice in the country so that the process that we have been developing can be uh, uh, owned by the government and say that uh, uh, in the future, so we need to really 
work on policy issues like this. Uh, and then there are many opportunities to collaborate on this. So this is why also we need to open some spaces of discussion on this, uh, on this process. So all the partners that exist here, because we have been opening uh, at the very beginning to different organizations to have their view and then to discuss on spaces. So we continue to open it. So in case you have any uh, organization interested in the process, we are really open to discuss with them uh, uh, as in part, but also as uh, part of the CSO. So open it to farmers organizations who have been very, very critical to this, uh, to this process. So we have, um, uh, it's, a, it's a door open also and a call for exchange on this, uh, on this, on this uh, to have more people on board so that we can contribute. This is why also when we had this hearing uh, at the parliament, they asked individual organizations to come for the hearing. We refused to come individually. We decided to have a, a preliminary support to a farmers organization and to have a meeting at the chambers of agriculture, including all the farmers organizations, but also NGOs, and to have a common position. So we can, Mohamed can share with you also the the position paper that we sent to the parliament and we had a whole morning of uh, hearing at the parliament to defend the position and they included these positions also uh, in the document so most of things are not details but at least for the community land for including also uh, the local uh, uh, land commissions at village level and these kind of things are now included in the document so, so thank you very much, uh, um, Madhu and Mohamed. Uh, actually, we have been uh, we we went about a long way of our time. So maybe we'll mm -hmm. take maybe one or two more quick questions, and then we will have and please, Mohamed and Mohamedou, the response need to be quite brief because we are now over our time. So I will take yeah. one from Tony Hill. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, this is a quick question. I'm curious to know what the implication will be for rights to use trees on agricultural land. Um, you mentioned briefly that the, one, one of the groups identified were uh, agroforestry users. And I'm aware there's, there's many non-timber forest products that are used um, based on the tree, trees in the savanna zone. Um, but also that farmer managed natural regeneration systems, um, the harvesting of firewood is, is an important income source for many farmers and that they've been in conflict with the Forest Service in the past over the rights to cut trees, to use trees on their land. Is this new law going to resolve that conflict or make it more complicated? Yeah. Uh, this is a very, very important question. So we had uh, this discussion also very deeply in the past. Um, just to tell you that uh, we, 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 we consider it, and this is why also what we call identification of different types of land and different owners is very, very important. And this is also in the action plan is one of the key activities that should be implemented and they started now. We need to know very clearly what are these land that we call the state lands? What are these land that we call community lands? What are these land that we call individual land? You are Malians living in the US or living in, in Paris or Amsterdam, having huge portion of lands that they are not using, but at the same time, we don't know what is the status. So we want to be clear about that. In terms of agricultural domain, what are the owners of this land and what land they have, actually? If you do this mapping, this means that there are protected forests. And, uh, and the state is also trying to, to take up, out some of the legal instrument on this protecting uh, uh, forest and give it to individual investors and all these kind of things. But since most of these forests belong to the category of community lands, this means that this is no longer possible for the government to take it and give it because that won't be part of its land. In the case of, the, of a, 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 a community who want to, uh, to protect, to have a regeneration system, so on the land that they, they own, they legally have now, so it's, there is no problem for that, that they can do it. And this is why also already in some regions, we already have, with the, um, the uh, local commissions already tested in the region of Sikaso and uh, part of Kulikoro. So they, are already, they have been already working on this community land, on this regeneration system lens and then give the responsibility to the communities to do it. 
and followed by, uh, supervised by uh, land commissions. So it's a very important issue and we need to follow on that because it's very important. So thank you very much. <laughs> so now we are going to close because it's already 4.30. So I would like to thank uh, everybody for joining us and have that uh, conversation with Mamadou and <laughs> Mohamed who have been doing a very wonderful job. Uh, just for information, we will hold another uh, video conference, but this time in French, on the okay. on the law in Mali. So I think Tangi might be quite interested to join. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if you have any question or remaining question or comments, please feel free to join uh, or Mohamed or uh, Mamadou and myself, and we will be really happy to to respond. So, bon weekend and thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci. 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 Au revoir. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, right. mm -hmm.